What's going on everybody? It's Mikey Bananas from the Grown Man Record Night program here with another video. Tonight we're going to be doing a little thread slash contest entry for our man Steve Carlson. Now Steve has a fantastic channel. I'm sure most of you guys are probably already subscribed at this point. He's been around for a long time and uh, got to be one of the nicest guys in the VC. I mean, let's be honest. And uh, what and I love the Sunday show. The Sunday show is absolutely awesome. I appreciate anybody that can stick to a weekly schedule. We know what that is like here. But anyway, um, like most of you know, last year, Steve was struck with a devastating flood, lost the majority of his collection. And it was not only crazy to watch um, how he handled that with the, I don't, I don't know, the couth that he did and was able to keep it together and keep things in perspective. I really admired that. It was also cool to see the VC come together and try to help him out. And something else that I've, I've really enjoyed is watching him rebuild his collection and how he maybe is doing things a little differently or if he has a just having to start almost from ground up is pretty interesting and it got me to thinking like um you know if, if if it was was all to go away and we had to do this all over again would i do the same thing again you know would i would i only collect super rare stuff or like mofi stuff or would i still go into goodwill and buy like every freaking record i could get my hands on which is kind of the way it started for me but anyway this new beginnings thread slash contest he started i think is pretty cool because it highlights um bands or albums that you've received through vclt or just been inspired from other members of the vc or anybody in general and how that's helped you kind of delve into other genres and other bands and um that's kind of left its mark on you in whatever way and i think it's a very cool idea because and have lots of people sent us great stuff here on the show over the years we and met a lot of great people uh doing doing this channel um it's even from early on people were sending us stuff and it's it, sometimes it's not always stuff that's um we're unaware of but for instance you know i ran my mouth uh for the longest time like about orville peck and what a great album this was didn't own it and the, t the new tad reissues i've been running my mouth about that shane armad finally he sends me both of those probably to just to get me to shut up about it but uh you know just something that like that that you know i'm well aware of those records but just kind of fills that gap in the collection you scotty strict nonsense fun house which it was a big hole in the collection uh, just a couple of weeks ago sonic doom spaceman sent the neon knights compilation which was just something very nostalgic for me that uh that's really special because that's somebody that's really paying attention to something i've mentioned in passing a couple of times maybe about a a compilation album that my parents owned when I was a kid on cassette. So there's been super cool things like that. And what about all the, the cool like um, FM broadcast boot stuff that Vance sent us? Guns and Roses, the Alice in Chains, the Johnny Winter stuff. I mean, you know, th the list goes on and on. But I'm sticking tonight with stuff that I was completely not aware of until I ran across it. Some of it's VCLT. Some of it is um, it's just stuff that, uh, you know, that we found out through other people or whatever. Anyway, let's get going. Early on in it, our good buddy, uh, Chris from Dixieland Farm, actually in a physical digging trip, um, me and Steve, uh, Chris from Dixieland Farm and DJ Thunder went digging here locally, and we were um, walking around this one antique mall, and Chris pulled this record out and just said, you got that? And I was like, no, I never heard of it. And he was like, buy it. This is a place where everything's two bucks or three bucks at the time, two bucks. And it was Jay and Kai plus six. Jay and uh, Jay and Kai Trombone Octet, which is JJ Johnson and Kai Winding. And um, I'm like, wait, trombone? I mean, I love jazz, but like trombone jazz? And really blew me away because I didn't realize trombone could be so awesome in jazz. And so early on, thanks to Chris for hipping me to Jay and Kai. If you see that up, you can pick that up pretty cheap, man. It's good stuff. Um, also early on, our good buddy of the program, Mr. Tambroni, not John Nunn. I don't think he, he doesn't really make videos anymore, but uh, hit me to the, uh, the band Dreams. This is Imagine My Surprise. Dreams is one of the first like uh, uh, kind of jazz rock groups from like the late 60s, early 70s that kind of took hold. This is actually produced by um, Steve Cropper. This, this is their second record. And a lot of people that uh, like... The, the Brecker Brothers is on here. Billy Cobham plays on here. Obviously went on to go do some other stuff uh, and had a long pedigree. But uh, 
a great uh, breeding ground for that kind of jazz rock vibe. And uh, still love this stuff today. Don't play this one enough, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. It's like, why the hell haven't we played that in a while? Anyway, moving right along. Speaking of our good buddy Vance, a little more recently, uh, maybe six months ago, Vance picked up a reissue of this band, and I, I saw him like, what the hell, this is awesome. And he was like kind of playing it. Um, Dead End, Ghost of Romance. These, this is a Japanese metal band from the 80s. This one is from... I don't have my glasses on. 87. 87, the Japanese uh, metal band. And I was not familiar with these guys. And so gave it a, you know, kind of Googling around or whatever and uh, listened to it. And I'm like, holy shit, this is fantastic music. And Metal Theologian actually said, hey, I know this place where they have this record still sealed from 87. Like, that's the, like, the original hype sticker. And I bought it brand new. Uh, unfortunately... It was a little warped, and by a little warped, I mean it kind of looks like uh, yeah, it's it's warped. But anyway, I've been flattening it out. I'm not gonna. We'll look later to see maybe if it's gotten any better. I've had a bunch of heavy shit sitting on it, so I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll flatten it. But it was like it was less than ten bucks, brand spanking new. So uh, very cool. Moving right along, our good buddy Michael Cron, uh, a really weirdo pick in this. Um, sent us this Michigan band. A little Michigan connection here. Uh, Cavalcade. And the name of this is called, the name of this album is Sonic Euthanasia. Really freaking weird record, man. It's, uh, I've seen it referred to as psychedelic sludge. To me, the vocals seem a little black metal-y, but there's like all these weird kind of elements to it. It's not your standard fair of any genre, but it's really kick-ass. It kind of bends all kinds of genres, which is something we really like, something I really like, especially. Um, so we, we pull this one out on... I have the hardest time remembering this band's name, which is crazy, because Cavalcade... And we used to have a show that we did called Captain Car Wash's Cartoon Cavalcade. So you'd think I'd be able to remember the word Cavalcade. Anyway... So, I almost had to uh, message him and be like, what's the name of that band again? Which makes me feel like an absolute lunatic. Anyway, so the first time our good buddy Metal Theologian visited physically here in the studio several years ago, he stopped off and uh, brought us some VCLT right off of the road trip coming here. Actually, I think he bought it locally here at one of our spots. And it's a record that he, I don't think he really knew about either. He just said it looks, he's good at taking chances on things better than I am. I'm in the back putting stuff on, listening with headphones. I'm pulling up YouTube clips. He'll be like, nah, cover looks cool. It looks like something you guys would be into. This is Weldon, Ir Weldon Irvine Cosmic Vortex, 1974. This is like jazz-inspired funk. It's heavier in jazz at times. It's heavier in funk at times. Weldon Irvine is actually, he's the keys guy, so he plays a lot of clavinet, um, a lot of piano, stuff like that. But mm. it's funky, funky, baby, and it's right up our alley. He was right. He was right. I don't think he knew much about it, but boy, was he right. Absolute smoker of a record. This is a reissue. Um, BMG Records? I don't know. But uh, love that record. And speaking of Metal Theologian, one of the only times I've ever really done this, um, it was a Saturday night. We're sitting around here just hanging out, and I'm watching Metal Theologian's video where he goes through um, trying to see how many countries you can pull out of your collection. You know, I got, you know, I got I'm just making it. U2's from Ireland, you know, Dead Ends from Japan, whatever. Like pulling a, a, a record from every country that he could possibly do. So he gets to the United States and he says, I'll never, I'll, I'll never um, miss an opportunity to hype this band out of the United States. Black Death. It's a Cleveland band. Uh most known for being the first all African-American heavy metal band. This is from like 84, I believe. Uh, Hell's Headbangers did this reissue recently. It comes with a bonus seven inch. And I was it, legendary for being the first all African-American band. But forget that for a second. It's a killer record. It's an absolute killer record. I hear, um, they, they were around since like 77, I think. But uh, I hear elements of like Motorhead in this. It's kind of real, just ruckus. They're a ruckus band and just a good ass time and a killer record. But I, I took, now I'd have had a couple of cervezas Saturday night. What do you want me to do? Um, but he, he said, 
I, I was thinking to myself, Metal Velocian can name any band for America. I mean, how many bands could you name? And he chose this one. And I was like, no, nah, man, if that's the band, he, I'm going to go buy it right now. And so I just, I sampled like 30 seconds of it. I went right to that Hell's Headbangers website, ordered this reissue, and it was like 20 bucks. And then like, you know, just a, you know, a few days later, it popped up and I'm like, oh yeah, I did, uh, I did order that record, didn't I? I'll be damned. Um, anyway. Speaking of some weird shit, and this is this is one of the ones that blew me, blew us uh, away more than almost any. Our good buddy Scotty Strychnon, who sent us a lot of great stuff. Like I mentioned, he sent that Fun House. He sent me my first Dead Kennedys. All kinds of cool stuff. But this was in the first batch he sent years ago. Cybertron. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. It's, uh, holy cow. This is an Australian band. And they're uh, somewhere between, I don't, I don't know what you would describe, somewhere like somewhere, is, uh, you hear like craft work, you hear like Tangerine Dream, you hear Hawkwind kind of esque stuff. It's from like 76, I believe. This is Dual Planet Records. It's a 2014 reissue, at least on Dual Planet. I don't know if that's the same one where it was released originally. Uh, Clear Light of Jupiter, it says down there. I don't know if that's a label, the original label or what. But absolutely mind-blowing stuff if you've never heard this now there's another band called cybertron i think they may be out of detroit or something like that but this one bonkers the artworks killer holy cow man find that give it a listen listen online if nothing else it's so killer uh really out there a good little late night vibe if you know what i'm saying and finally uh some of you may think this is kind of corny I don't give a shit because over the past several years, um, one genre that I was completely oblivious to and really got turned on is synthwave. Now, I I just stumbled on the synthwave genre and I, well, this stuff sounds like like '80s music. That's but it's from now and it just kind of blew me away and I was had no idea. And where did I find out about this? The back-to-back 1993-1994 blockbuster video game international gaming superstar, the six foot eight great Dr. Disrespect, my absolute streaming hero. Um, watch him pretty much every day he's live. And I know this is not a VC member, so it's not like a friend of mine or anything like that, but by watching his channel and just watching him stream, he plays almost, he plays exclusively synthwave music. And I discovered so many great bands and playlists and just discovered the entire genre. And like low key, if I'm not doing the show on Friday night, if I'm just sitting here chilling on a Tuesday, there's a good chance I'm, I'm especially if I'm working, I'm, I'm listening to Synthwave. It's, it's my favorite stuff right now. Um, especially my favorite to, to discover and tr trying to, you know, branch out and figure it all out, you know? I'm several years deep now, but I'm still just now learning. Um, but I've been lucky enough. Actually, this this would be considered VCLT because it's one of the best Christmas presents I ever got from the fiance. Somebody I discovered, Volker X. This is Synthwave. Got it. From, it's one of my favorite records in the last few years. This came all it's straight from Doc Stream, and it took me six months. I kept trying to figure out who this was and who this was, and I was on a Spotify mix one night, and the song popped out. And I was gaming and just threw my, threw my mouse down alt tabbed over to the page wrote it down went and looked it up to confirm and i was i was just i was on cloud nine that i found it literally took me six months to figure out who that was but this is um this record is uh this means war the name of the track i was talking about is called beacon if you want to give that a google beacon by volker x to blow you away mind-blowing song but i discovered that through through dr disrespect and also through dr disrespect I found a recent pickup of mine, um, Mitch Murder. This is Interceptor. It's a 20, uh, 2018, 2018 release on um, Mad Decent Records. One, of, Those are my probably my two favorite, two of my three favorite um, synthwave artists, and I'm lucky enough to pick them up on pick them up on vinyl. It's kind of tough to pick up synthwave on vinyl, I have to say. Um, there's not a lot of stuff out there. I mean, there is, but you really have to search for it. Look how killer that back, the, v, the VCR and the tapes and shit. 
There's an Atari down there. So kick ass. And that's what it sounds like. There's actually a song on this called like Saturday Morning. No, it's called Saturdays. And it sounds like it, you hear a kid run downstairs and turn on the TV and fire up cartoons in the morning. It's got it's just got that vibe. That 80s, 80s arcade cartoon. I don't know. If you're a child of the 80s, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And this genre nails it. And maybe I'm just nostalgic for that era. And I wish I was a kid again. I don't know. But anyway, that's some of the stuff I pulled out that I think I've really been hip to in the last few years from some of the people in the VC and some people that are not in the VC. But anyway, thank you, Steve, for doing this uh, contest and this thread. I think it's pretty cool. It's new beginnings. And I've, I've enjoyed watching other people's videos about some of the stuff that they've discovered. And um, I appreciate your videos and I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.